Christ teaches and the scripture declares that even though believers may lose standing within their communities, even though family may decide that they don't want anything to do with you anymore, even though friends may decide and ridicule you and say that you've gotten decided you're too good for them or you're, you, they don't want to deal with you anymore, even though you may lose your standing in society, you, have, you will never lose your standing in the kingdom as one of his disciples. As this relates to spiritual communities, uh, spiritual communities would like to believe that they are an exception to this principle. They'd like to believe that they can decide if you're worth, worthwhile or not, that they can decide what your worth is, and that if they don't like you, that must mean you're not worth anything because they're spiritually, spiritual communities. They'd like to believe that they wield acceptance within their communities as acceptability to God, that if they don't accept you, God don't accept you. It's not the way it works. It's not the way the scripture says it works. But it, it, it's, it's critical to remember that the God of the spiritually abusive community and the God of Scripture are not the same. People who dwell in spiritual communities, though, they can barely see the difference. This allows the community to establish a shame-based relationship, which will allow the community to continue to feed off the person with little to no protest. And we're going to talk more about shame-based relationships moving forward. But you, you've, you've got a community who will make you feel like God doesn't accept you and try to place shame on you that you're less valuable to the group and thus you're less valuable and, and, and thus you're shamed because you're less valuable to the group if you don't comply, if you don't do what they want to tell you to do, if they decide that you don't like you, if the leader doesn't like you. They, they will try to impose the weight and start to affect your life's experience because they don't accept you. Once you start to be ostracized, once you start to be mistreated, talked about, uh, marginalized, tossed aside like you don't really matter, they try to Im impose these experiences on you that cause you, because you're not accepted by the group, to cause you to feel the weight of shame, to cause you to experience less of a quality of living the one Christ has promised. But he promised us freedom with freedom from shame, freedom from having to carry the weight of that, that he would affirm us that if we are in relationship with him, that if we may stay within the co covenant and within the promise that we made to be in relationship with Christ, and if we work with him, and if we are a disciple of his, and we learn from him, and we seek and we try to understand him better and ex exist in relationship with him, that we don't have to deal with that. So that's an, Eastern, that's an Eastern concept of shame that we just talked about. We're free, we're free from condemnation being in Christ Jesus. But yet some of us wrestle with feeling like if we don't have the approval of the communities that we are a part of, that we don't have God's approval. And it weighs on us and it affects the quality of life that we experience. And it's unfortunate because it doesn't have to be. It's not what God intended. It's not what the scripture declares we should be able to experience. We should be able to walk around feeling uplifted because we've been validated and affirmed by God. And because even though sometimes we feel isolated, even though sometimes we feel like we're alone, we are a part of a eternal community stretching back generations. And we have value within that community. Forget about your friends, forget about your family for a half a second. They may not get it, they may not understand it, but as a child of God, he knows, he understands, and I have brothers and sisters that I may not have met, that I may have to start looking for to be able to build up a healthy set of relationships and a healthy religious experience, but I got a community who honors me, who sees my value. God sees my value. God's real people. God's true people, those who are in covenant relationship and walk with him, will see my value and that God will affirm publicly the value that he's placed in me. So that, deals with, that is an explanation of why we don't have to feel shame from an Eastern perspective. The next lesson that we deal with is going to talk about why we don't have to experience shame from a Western perspective, which is quite a bit different because like I talked about, 
we're an individualistic society, and so our idea of shame derives from what we experience and how we value ourselves. And that's what we're going to get into in the next series we have. I hope this was a blessing to somebody, and I look forward to talking with you again later. You have a good night.